Congratulations, because since your founding, or since the founding of your fund, you're up 97%, and this year already, according to our reporting, you're beating your average annualised return, which itself stands around 28%. Tell us about this year and how you managed to do that. So I think in January, first of all, thank you for having me. In January, we talked about um, how buyout debt and pockets of turbulence in the markets allowed us to take advantage of what was a turbulent Q4 in 18, if you remember, and there was quite a big snapback in the first quarter of 19. So I think that was a big part of it. I think in addition, we looked at some sectors that I think are likely to create capital growth over the next several years' time, mm -hmm. but also have a running cash yield. Um, and so one of those is really the listed alternative sector. Um, and you know that's a space where I think you've seen very strong returns this year as they've made structural changes to their uh, companies, they've converted C Corps, but also they're really growing and they're paying strong yields. I think these are the two of the areas that have made a big difference for us. You talked about buyout debt, but the year has gotten quite frothy in terms of buyout debt. What is your longer term outlook there? Do you think next year is going to be a really tough year for how that asset class performs? I think a lot of the credits that have run up a lot you know, will go into trouble because they've just been lifted by a rising tide of liquidity. But I think if you look at individual names, individual credits, then you will see you know, pockets of opportunity. But at a macro level, yeah, I think whether you look at leveraged loans or whether you look at buyout debt, both have been buoyed by um, a lot of liquidity coming into the system, plus the documentation is very weak. Um, and so it's uh, really uncharted territory how they'll perform when the downturn does happen, whenever that does happen. So you've told me that your investment thesis factors in a U-shaped recession. That means a prolonged downturn, and that means bankruptcies. But on the other hand, you invest a lot in private equity, for example. So how do you pair off that thinking? If uh, so many companies may be going bankrupt, what's your outlook there and how that might impact the private equity industry overall? So I think a recession doesn't look near term, as we've seen from the numbers, but growth is muted. And so what I think you'll see in the near term is a lot of companies that have, private equity firms that have portfolios which they can monetize are likely to sell in the next 12, 24 months as they see a good opportunity and plenty of dry powder to take up, that, um, take up those monetizations. Um, but I think longer term, yeah, sure, they're all factoring in you know, lower growth, uh, recession, everything you'd expect as liquidity unwinds, as monetary policy unwinds. Um, and you know, for us, I think what we're doing is trying to pick those managers that are likely to be able to pivot from one product to another. So they're not just looking at vanilla buyouts, they're also doing distress, they're also doing infrastructure, they have permanent capital vehicles, they're looking at various different ways uh, to invest as opposed to just one form. And I think that you know, firms that only really invest through one channel, I think that's going to be more challenging in the coming years. I want to follow up on that because you're a big private equity investor these days. Also, you really believe in these listed firms. A lot of warnings out there about the plain vanilla buyout, even amid some talk about some of them coming back. Uh, how do people move away from this large uh, buyout model? Uh, what's not going to work in private equity's kind of 2.0 phase? So I think, I think it comes back to some basic fundamentals. If you're buying um, even good companies but at top of the market prices, um, you know, we've seen that movie before, we've seen that those things unwind, but I think you really look at much more complicated situations. So firms that are doing deals that others really can't do, maybe because they have the scale, or maybe because they have uh, more complexity in the way they've structured the deal, maybe they're going through the distress channel, those are the sort of mechanisms that will you know, generate really strong returns in yields to come. Sachin, uh, Guy in London, can I ask you a bigger picture question? I can't hear you. The Fed last night, the ECB today, rates are lower for longer, as far as the eye can see. I hope you can hear me. Um, is there a danger that we see a world in which too much money ends up in the private equity space for that space to be efficient? I, I, I think that's such a long way away. Uh, it's not really that realistic to talk about. I mean, I think still private equity is still really under allocated to. If you look at what it's doing, it's taking sources of capital into infrastructure, into, you know, into high street firms, into main street firms. Um, I, th I think that's a long way away. I think we're only really at the beginning of uh, a strong secular trend that's going to boost private equity uh, as an al asset allocator. And it's needed, because if you look at where pension funds, endowments and so on are getting their returns from, they're getting them from private equity that's allowing them to service their liabilities. So I'm, I'm not sure uh, you know, what you're talking about is really going to happen anytime soon.
I, I'm just curious because over the last 10 years, uh, the S&P's annualised return somewhere around 10%. It, uh, it's, uh, and that's been driven a lot by central banks cutting rates. Central banks are just going to leave rates on the floor. So I'm wondering where you see asset allocators going. How much of it's going to go towards private equity? How much of it's going to go into illiquid assets? I'm curious as to what you see the next 10 years generating. I think that's a great question. I think that uh, allocations to private equity will increase, and we're seeing that. So right now, for example, you have muted growth, you have relatively high valuations across the market, and you have political uncertainty, geopolitical uncertainty that you guys cover so well. And yet, allocations to private equity are growing. And why are they growing? They're growing because they're performing. Um, and as long as they perform and they're able to help uh, sources of capital, pension funds, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, and so on, meet their obligations, then I think you'll see those allocations increasing. Remember also they're starting from a very, very low base. So if you talk about 10 years ago, there were tiny allocations to private equity. So I think going forward, you start to see that normalize somewhat. How are you looking at next year's elections? Because it's quite clear that the Democrats, most of them, some of them, will come down pretty hard on private equity. Are you factoring that in yet? So I think it's, it's really a little bit difficult to understand because if you look at the numbers and you look at what private equity is doing, it's overwhelmingly supportive of what they're doing. When you look at job creation, you look at uh, businesses well, the they support. From industry's point of view, it is. But I think if you just look at the hard data, uh, if you look at the number of jobs that are created when they buy these companies, we look at the very low level of bankruptcies, it is overwhelmingly supportive. I think where the conversation is, is these firms are five to ten times larger now than they were, let's say, in the last recession. So there's naturally more of a dialogue around them because they, they're more of a factor in the economy. And so what I think you'll see is their communication opening up and talking a little bit more about what they're doing with portfolio companies, what they're doing in communities and so on. That's basically where I think that dialogue is going. And you're seeing that when you listen to their earnings calls. Um, you know, I, I would be surprised if any of the rhetoric we've seen you know, translates into, uh, translate to into real impact.